Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Natalia Lee and I'm the author of a few novels for young adults, the most recent being the cozy contemporary fantasy, Song of the Dryad. Today I am back with another tea time episode. This is going to be episode 13. I have simple peppermint tea brewing here. It is still a bit hot though, so not gonna drink it just yet. Okay, so today is Sunday, May 12th. Um, I have not filmed a video in a while. I've been really struggling to keep up with filming lately. Uh, so this is going to be a little bit of an update, like a fun update about my Pistol Daisy project, about my writing, about other projects I have going on, just some exciting stuff that we're gonna chat about. So my pet sitting has been pretty busy lately, which is part of what's affecting my ability to be filming videos because I used to have like daily pet sitting visits regularly like four days a week. I usually had a Monday or a Friday off and I did a lot of filming on those days. But recently uh, I've had pet sitting Monday through Friday and then sometimes on the weekends as well. So it's kind of, it's kind of like playing catch up all the time. Um, but I'm just trying to kind of go with the flow. I can't control everything. So I'm just gonna sit down and film when I can. And right now I can, so here I am. Uh, so what is the first thing I want to update you on? I guess the first thing I want to update you on today is how Pistol Daisy is going. Pistol Daisy book one and Pistol Daisy book two. So Pistol Daisy book one is totally finished. The cover is finished and it's gorgeous. All the promotional images are finished. I did like all the formatting. It looks beautiful. I ordered a proof copy with the final cover. Looks amazing it's ready to go. Like the Kindle ebook file is ready to go, everything. So at this point, I'm just holding on to it. I'm just holding on to it until I can release multiple books kind of in a batch. And we'll talk about that in, you know, a different video when it's time to do publishing. But Pistol Daisy book one, totally complete. And it feels amazing. It feels really good. Pistol Daisy book two is in the works. It's coming along a little bit slower than I anticipated though, because I wrote book one extremely fast. I think it took me like two or three weeks to write 40-ish thousand words or 35,000 words. And that was the first draft. I did it uh, Jan Jan Janu January. <laughs> I wrote it in January of 2019. I called it Janurimo. Yes, Janurimo. I like how that sounds better. Uh, and it went really well, but now it is May and my book, Pistol Daisy book two is sitting at 22,000 words. My goal for um, April for Camp NaNoWriMo was to write 30,000 words. I didn't hit 30,000, I hit almost 20K. I was at like 19 and some change. So I still feel good about what I wrote in April. I mean, I wrote about 20,000 words. So that's definitely, definitely progress. It's just coming along much slower than the first book did. It's coming along slower than I thought it would. And I think part of that is that I had a big full length manuscript copy edit that I was working on in April. I was spending a lot of hours working on that, making sure it was spick and span and ready to go for the author. And that's totally done. I am very happy with the work that I did. I'm so excited about it. I hope the author loves it. So that wrapped up uh, the first week of May. So now that I don't have that on my plate, I have more ability and more time and more brain power to be writing. And now it's just a struggle of getting back into the routine of it. Um, I'm trying to write in the mornings again because I totally got out of the routine of writing in the mornings. But now I'm getting back into it and it helps me so much because when I get home at the end of the day, you know, it's like I've been doing pet sitting all day, I get home at five o'clock and then I still have to do editing and I have to make dinner. It's like, I don't wanna be creative when I get home at night, I just don't. And with the way I've been practicing my work-life balance, I don't force myself to sit down and write. And I certainly have been more lighthearted um, recently and that feels really good to not be freaking out on myself all the time about having to get all the things done so I know that writing in the morning is the best for me. So that's what I'm trying to do. Even if I get like 500 words written in the morning, I'm very, very happy with that. That's kind of, 
I wouldn't say I have a word goal. I definitely don't have a daily word count goal anymore, but if I can write 500 words in the morning before I have to go to work and do pet sitting, then I feel really happy with that. I'm very comfortable with that. But this leads us into um, something else, which is big and crazy for me, and that is pantsing. Now, I'm not a pantser. I haven't been a pantser since before I published a book. Like, I used to try to pants, and none of my books ever turned out. They had no direction, and I had no idea what I was doing. Granted, I was a very beginner writer back then as well, so that played into it. But I've been doing a lot of pantsing lately. And it's very strange, because this book that I'm working on now, I have it outlined. But as I'm writing, I'm finding that there is like organic growth within the characters and within the story that doesn't fit into the rigid structure of my outline. And part of this, I think, is that it's a sequel, and I've never finished a sequel before. I've never published a sequel. Like, this is very new territory for me. And I, you know, I wrote book one, and I learned a lot about the characters, and then I had, you know, I already had my outline, my basic outline for book two. And now I'm working on book two, and as I'm looking at my outline, I'm thinking, okay, like, these plot points no longer make sense for this character because that's not how she acts. Like, she wouldn't do these things because I've developed her differently than I thought I was going to. And I do think it's slowing my uh, process down because if I have an outline, I can push through pretty quickly because even if I'm not feeling super creative and inspired, I can look at my outline and say, here's what's next. Let's just push through this hard bit here, you know, push through this transition between scenes and I know where I'm going. But now I don't know. Like, I definitely have major plot points in my head, not only for this book, but for further books along the series, like things that I'm just super excited to write and that I've been like writing down and I'm keeping track of these big things that I want to happen. So I have a roadmap, but it's not nearly as detailed as what I usually do because my typical outlines are chapter by chapter, scene by scene, everything tediously and carefully broken down and arranged and organized in a way that shows me the entire picture that I'm working with. And right now, I have none of that. I'm gonna risk it, see if I can take a drink of this. Maybe I shouldn't risk it. I think it's gonna be really hot. Nope, I'm not gonna risk it. I can feel the heat like on my face, so that's just gonna wait there for a little while longer. Um, but I never thought I would be a pantser. And I've said this in many videos in the past, like down with pantsing, I'm such an outliner. And I do still identify as an outliner and as a plotter, but I also am finding, maybe I'm becoming a planter. Like I am finding a lot of joy and um, what's the word? Like surprise and adventure and excitement in letting the characters explore their world without me controlling them. And I almost feel like I'm stepping into my main character. Her name is Daisy Allen, and I kind of feel like I'm stepping into her and exploring her world with her rather than like moving her around the board and telling her what to do. And that that's kind of strange for me because Daisy and I are super different in terms of personality. I align so much with Charlotte Barclay, who is the main character of Song of the Dryad. I didn't mean to write myself into her, but I definitely wrote a lot of my personality traits into her, so I felt so comfortable with her. But with Daisy, she and I are so wildly different. Like, we have a few little personality traits that align, but other than that, she is aggressive and she's confident and she is kind of like, what's a good word I could use for her? Like she just gets shit done and she doesn't care about what other people think of her and she's just such an independent character and I'm so different from her in so many ways. So it's strange to feel like I'm able to sink into her and explore her world but I'm loving it. Like, I'm absolutely loving it. A big plot twist, well, it's not a plot twist for like the readers, but it was a plot twist for me because I didn't see it coming. I didn't know that this was going to happen, but I introduced a character early on in book two. 
um, that I never intended on introducing. I actually thought I was going to kill this character off really fast, uh, but I ended up not killing him off. I was like, let's just see what happens with this character. And this character has turned into a major player that is influencing a lot of the action that is happening now in act two of book two. And before, like when I sat down to write book two, I had an idea of what the action was going to be in this book, but I wasn't certain yet. And it's totally changed and I'm excited. Like there's this feeling of just like going on an adventure with my characters and with my story and seeing what happens. And I'm loving it. Like I see now, I do have a much better understanding of pantsers that say, you know, I, I don't want to know everything. I want to explore and I want the world to reveal itself to me. And I see that now and it is so much fun. It's so much fun. So I feel like, I feel like that's what's going to happen for this book series because when I started outlining book one, I knew in my head like, okay, I want this to be a long series. I'm kind of aiming for six books. How do I outline this? And I sat down and I was like, okay, let's try to outline the first book fully. And then let's try to like do a basic outline of the series. And it was so difficult because I hadn't developed anyone. I didn't know how the characters were going to behave or what they were going to be like. And now that I've had a little bit of experience with it, I'm starting to think that I can have an idea of here's where the story starts. Here's where I'm thinking the story is going to wrap up, but I have no idea how I'm going to get from point A to point B. Like, I don't know how that's going to happen and that's okay. I thought I had to sit down and plot everything. And that's why I was so confused by, by the authors like Sarah Cannon, for example, who has very, very long detailed series. And I have read some of her books and I really enjoy them. I'm working on her uh, beautiful demon series right now and it's so much fun. And in my head, I was like, okay, how did she do this? Like, did she plot everything out, you know, point by point by point? And I would like to sit down like, or email her or something and chat with her about how she's done this. So Sarah, if you're watching and you're interested, that'd be awesome. Maybe we could chat about these things and I could ask you my questions. Um, but I haven't reached out to her yet. I know that she's very busy right now with moving and a baby on the way, a lot of exciting stuff. But you know, I was thinking, did she plot all 13 books? Like, how does she do this? How does she know everything that's going to happen? But I'm learning that for myself, at least, I have a basic idea of what's going to happen. And then the world is just unfolding and it's so much fun. So to you pantsers out there, I get you now. I feel like my mind has been enlightened to the way of the pantser and I got you. I understand and it's a lot of fun. It is a lot of fun. I'm going to try to drink my tea. Ooh, hot, but not too hot. Very good. So that's what's going on with that currently. Um, I have the book cover for book two planned for the beginning of June. So it'd be super sweet if I could finish this book in May so that I have like a good idea of the cover I want on it. But I also feel like um, I'm currently not trying to depict scenes from the book on the cover. I'm just trying to depict uh, like a feeling, like the cover that Pistol Daisy book one has right now isn't a specific scene, it's just a feeling, like it communicates the genre, it communicates the character, and I think that's way more important than trying to flesh out a scene on the cover. So I do have ideas for the book two cover, but I haven't started working with my designer yet to do that. We're gonna do that at the beginning of June, June 4th actually, so that's coming up, less than a month, less than a month away. Uh, what else? Okay, so I have decided to start offering like a mentorship coaching program to writers looking to be authors and authors who feel like they need a little bit of guidance with their publishing platforms or social media platforms, etc. But here's the thing first. First, I am studying coaching. I'm studying lifestyle coaching. I want to make this a big point because, you know, I paid good money for this course. It's like a six month course that I'm taking to become a certified lifestyle wellness coach. And I want to make this point because in my previous video, I talked about briefly 
how it's been bothering me that a lot of people in our community are trying to sell services to everyone for everything. And while I think it's great if you are like skilled in the thing that you're doing that you're trying to help people with, great, that's awesome. But I do not support people selling their services if they don't know what they're doing. So I have wanted to be like an author mentor, author coach for a long time, probably like a year now. I've had it in my head. Like I really want to do this. I really want to be able to help people on a one-on-one -on -one basis, you know, guide them and be their, their, you know, shoulder to lean on when they need somebody and somebody for them to ask their questions of and bounce ideas off of. But I felt like I didn't have the skill set required for it. And that's why I am taking a coaching course. I will never pretend to know something I don't. I will never pretend to have skills that I don't have. So that is why this is very important to me. I am about halfway through my course at this point. I'm having an amazing time with it. I should have my certificate probably here in the next couple of months. So I've gone ahead and launched a Patreon page and I'm using, this is my plan of the moment right now, like I'm using the Patreon tier system as a way to break down different like coaching packages. So at this point, I might add another tier, like I might add a like $1 tier for people that just want like um, printables and resources that I create for coaching. So I might create that. I don't have it right now today, but later today I might create it. So there might be a $1 tier. And then I have a $10 group coaching tier, which is essentially you get all my resources and every month we'll do like a group coaching live stream where I will take individuals and their very specific questions and answer them to the best of my ability. So in that way, everybody that's participating in the group coaching can learn. So if somebody asks me, hey, what's a big red flag with Ingram Spark? I can say, oh, by the way, I made this major fuck up on Ingram Spark and lost a thousand dollars. True story. And I cried for like three days. I lost a lot of money with Ingram Spark. So then I could, I could tell that person, here's my experience. Here's what not to do. And everybody in the coaching live stream could learn that. And then also, um, I have two more tiers that, you know, they include the group coaching, but then they're also going to be one-on-one -on -one coaching with me. And they are going to be hosted either via IM, like just typing, you know, chat box through Skype or doing a one-on-one -on -one phone call via Skype. And it's funny that I can offer this now because I've wanted to do this for a long time, but I, I suffer with such um, severe social anxiety that the idea of talking to somebody voice to voice, not even like video, uh, not even video chat, but just voice to voice was so scary to me that I was like, you know, I wanna offer coaching, but I can't talk on the phone to people. So how am I going to do this? And I have been going to, well, I've been having counseling sessions really about social anxiety, generalized anxiety, my self-worth, my values, my goals. Like I've been working one-on-one -on -one with a counselor and I'm doing so much better. And I feel like I'm in a point now where I can talk on the phone to somebody. I can do it. I can do it. I can do it. But I also know that there are a lot of people like me out there that don't want to talk on the phone. It's way too scary. Like it's scary. It's stressful. It's just so much more difficult. So that's why I'm also offering the I am because it's nice to just sit down with your coffee at your computer and I am somebody for an hour, right? Rather than having to like get on the phone with them. So my two one-on-one -on -one, uh, one -on -one coaching packages are a basic coaching package, which is only 50 bucks a month. And you get a one-on-one, -on -one, one hour session with me every month. And we can talk about anything that you're working on. And then the VIP, the VIP, very important person, uh, coaching package is only $75 a month and you get everything uh, that the other tiers have, but then you get an additional hour with me a month. So you would get two hours, two separate one hour blocks of time to chat with me either over the phone or IMing about 
anything about your writing, about editing, about publishing, about Ingram Spark and how difficult it is, about how easy Kindle Direct Publishing is making everything for me, etc. So those are the coaching tiers that I have as of right now. I do have them limited because I don't want to I don't want to think I can do more than I actually can and then let people down. So at this point, I'm only taking on four one-on-one -on -one, um, like mentors, mentees, mentees? Yeah, mentees a month. So if you're interested in one-on-one -on -one author coaching, author mentorship with me, you can check out my Patreon. It will be linked down below. And please remember, I am actually getting certified in this. So I'm not just bullshitting you. I feel like there is one other thing maybe. I made a list of things to update you on. Oh, yes, one last thing. One last thing before we go. I'm going to be doing another journal giveaway. Woohoo! Well, planner giveaway, a planner giveaway. So I'm going to be filming another one of those uh, chatty plan with me videos. I love, I love how that video went. I really loved the freedom of it. It's just gonna be me with one camera on my face, talking about things I've been thinking and been feeling lately, and then the other camera will be down on my planner while I plan out my month or my week or whatever I'm planning at that time. Um, so I will be doing another one of those in addition to giving away a free planner. So that will be here in the next couple of weeks. I am very excited about it. It's a brand new planner that I've never used before. So I'll be getting one and I'll be giving one away. So. If you're looking to get into planning, definitely keep an eye out on my channel because I'm going to be doing a plan with me and a giveaway very soon. All right, friends, I think that's about it for now. I am still offering copy editing and proofreading services. I have um, two clients booked right now, one in July and one in June. So I do only have one space left. That was me being notified that a bill is due. What? My bill price went up by like $20. Why? I'm gonna have to call them and ask why my payment just went up by $20. That's a little stressful. Anyway, uh, so yes, I do have one um, slot available for June and one available for July, but the other two slots are taken right now. I am feeling extremely good about my copy editing and proofreading services right now. Like I have, I have an eagle eye for mistakes. I love finding mistakes and I find a lot of them. So if you are interested in copy editing and proofreading services, you can visit my publishing house website. It is linked down below www.enchantedinkpublishing.com and then up in the little bar you just go to editing services and you can read about what I offer, what my editing services include, what my prices are, etc. And if you are interested in booking or have any questions, just shoot me an email. Super easy to do. All right, I'm going to go call the internet service provider because they're charging me more now and it's making me sad. So I have to go do that and I will see you guys in my next video. All right, bye everybody, enjoy your weekend, bye.